Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have another cool OEM system on the bench, a Hewlett Packard Pavilion system from 2006. Really excited to go over this with everybody today, really excited to have this in the collection. This would have been one of the systems back in 2006 I would have been walking by at a computer store and going, oh it's really cool, it's really cool looking. OEMs were really doing their best at the time to try to compete with each other, to try to get more and more market share every single day. As I called it in a lot of the comments down below over the last several months, the wild west of computing. So you know what? We have lots to do here today, so let's get right to it. Welcome back. The first thing we're going to do is go over this really good looking system here. So at the very top, we have a sticker that says Microsoft Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005. So that would have been a special version of Windows XP that was really focused on the media center type systems and applications and your home media. So, you know, we were really getting into file sharing and burning CDs and music and video editing and things like that. They really wanted to promote systems back then to be able to handle all that for you in an all-in-one system. So Microsoft made a version of Windows to be able to have those features as part of the operating system, a, a special suite add-on, if you will. And in this particular case, the systems try to mirror the functionality to take advantage of the operating system feature sets to be able to be able to go to market and say their systems were media center PCs. And that made, you know, try to differentiate themselves in that competitive market at the time. So it says here, can you do this? Or can your PC do this, I should say? Burn, flip, and burn. Create custom labels directly to disk with LightScribe DVD RW drive. So by the looks of things, we do have this in the system. Yeah, it is installed. We do have the LightScribe drive. And that allowed you to take CDs specifically for LightScribe and burn on one side. So you do your copy or make whatever you were going to make. And then you flip it over in the drive and you'd be able to write to on the label side. And keep me honest in the comments, that was specifically you had to have special media to be able to do that uh, or LightScribe compatible media. And so essentially you would create your own labels etched in the disc. None of these labels that would fall off in the drive or, you know, you had the CD stomper where you'd have to print your labels on an inkjet and put them on top. That all went away with LightScribe. So it says here, expansion bay. So again, I believe we have exactly what that says. Yeah, just an expansion bay, but it does look populated with a drive. It'd be interesting to open it up and see what that is. Okay, so we also have a memory card reader in the front. And I remember memory card readers being quite popular back in the day where they would take a three and a half inch floppy bay up as expansion and you could utilize that functionality if you had a bay with that. And the same thing with, um, you know, you had three and a half inch floppy drives and they were trying to get away from them at the time because this started becoming very popular. And the same thing with USB and this says specifically USB 2 on it. So, you know, we have the functionality and the speed of being able to have thumb drives. But you had smart card readers, you had compact flash, you had memory stick and pro here. So it also had the Sony variant in here as well. So it's really cool to have that. Then on the front here, we have a door that goes down and we have exposes a lot more, uh, a lot more features of this system itself. So we have a three and a half inch floppy. So speaking of floppy earlier, I am noticing that the front bezel is off of it. I don't know if that was designed that way or if it actually is missing from this drive. It looks to be gray. So I think I might have some uh, of this gray type uh, style drive. So I might be able to replace that. Then we have three audio. We have a 1394 Firewire connection plus two USB in the front. And I like how that's all kind of tucked away in here. And it kind of just, you know, goes in and then pops right back out when you bring it back up, which is pretty nice. Again, pretty slick uh, with the case versus, you know, just having a generic case that you would have at the time. So OEMs, like I said, we're really trying to appeal to people, uh, you know, aesthetics for the computers. Okay, so everything you need for digital photos. So HP Image Zone software, nine in one memory card reader and USB and Firewire ports. So they're really saying, you know what? 
whatever you're doing when it comes to digital media, we have your back. So the Hewlett Packard logo here with the power button and that looks like a hard drive LED here. And then we have award winning 24 seven support. So your toll free numbers for HP comes with a one year warranty, gives you a website for some support. And then there's more than 50 million consumer PCs sold. And Hewlett Packard is no slouch when it comes to systems, when it comes to computers, when it comes to different peripherals and they've been around a long, long time and they continue to acquire companies. So they're still around, still going strong and they're still making systems today. So along the bottom here, we have design for Microsoft Windows XP, graphics by ATI Radeon Graphics, and it I, I don't exactly see the model, it says 200 on here, but don't exactly know what that is, so we'll have to see what it is inside. We have the Hewlett Packard Pavilion A1320 model information on the front, and then we have an Intel inside Pentium 4 sticker. So if that's truly what's in the system, that's what it is in the front. So we'll turn this around, and I do want to make a note that this system came from the e-waste uh, haul that uh, I got, and I'll keep on flashing it up here on the screen while I talk about these systems as I go through them, but essentially, you know, I don't know if the system works. I haven't plugged it in. I haven't tried it. I'm doing all of this on the video today in hopes that it will turn on, or at the very least, we can get it posting and doing something with it. Okay, on the back here, we have our power supply and we have two PS2 ports here. We have digital audio. We also have the S video. So these are output. So it allowed you to hook up an S video and a digital audio port to your TV or external visual device of so your TV or monitor or higher end devices. You also have your parallel LPT port here as well. Then you have four additional USB. So you have your one, your one on the front and then you have four more on the back. So again, look at all the ports. You're getting tons of expandability. <laughs> I sound like an infomercial here, but essentially it's like what they were trying to do back in the day to say, you know what, we have you covered. Whatever you want to do in a media center, media type environment, whether it was video editing or like I said, pictures and things like that, it would all have the ability to plug this in. And you had multiple connections, multiple ports to be able to be compatible with an array of different manufacturers at the time. And hence the wild west of computing at the time. So then here you have your 1394 connection and you have also ethernet in, uh, in the system as well. And then you have your additional fan here for ventilation. So it is a little bit dirty if here, of course, I mean, it will be after, after a period of time, but, uh, but yeah, there it is. So then we have additional expansion here by the looks of things. So we have three, so we have four bays, one of which are occupied and it is, looks like a, just a, a regular modem that's there. Okay, we'll keep on going here. And here we are on the side and again, keeping design, <laughs> random design here, but you know, as much as aesthetically pleasing as it is, it definitely has additional cooling properties by having that where some systems would have been completely blocked off, relying solely on the uh, extra fan or ventilation that would have been installed. And also, you know, the camera's not crooked here. This system is actually on an angle. It's angled up, so it goes towards the back. And yeah, I mean, it just additional aesthetics as you would have done. The other system I had on the bench that was similar to that was the IBM Think Center M50. I did a video on right there. And uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But it was definitely something that was also an interesting design as well. Again, similar era competing for that place in the market. Okay, let's open this up. And I really love when they do this, just a simple thumb screw. I'm not having to just mess around with Phillips screws and screwdrivers and having to lose them and all that. So, okay, we just pop it off, simple as that. And we'll pop this over here. And then we are gonna look inside of a very filthy system. And here we are back with a different view so we can see inside the computer itself. And as you can see, we have our Hypro ATX power supply, it looks like, just a regular Pentium 4 power supply with the extra power supply for the Pentium 4 processor. We do in fact have two optical drives in here. So that's interesting. It says an expansion bay, but it does, it is populated. I know that some of these systems came with specific HP drives that allowed you to have like media bays, they call them, I believe it was, that you slide the actual, it's like a removable hard drive or hot swappable hard drive, but it was really just an external USB drive. So it was really interesting to see that these are populated. And it looks like some sort of toolless design we have going on here where you slide them forward or backwards to be able to access and remove components. We have our IDE cables galore, and this is obviously of the era with the IDE, uh, and <laughs> we also have SATA. So, I mean, it has that kind of like hybrid mode at this time. 
And over here, we do have one RAM slot populated and um, I would say that is DDR memory, but um, again, I'm just gonna double check here. And yeah, you know, I'm gonna take it out just to look at it, but uh, just to be sure. And it looks like we are running one gigabyte of DDR2 memory. So, you know, you have the ability to expand that memory if required. Now with this only has one gig of RAM, we'll leave that for now just so we can get the system up and running. But, uh, but yeah, essentially with one gig of RAM, <laughs> Um, it doesn't leave you a lot of options, so it does have the ability to expand if you need it. I would say you probably get, be able to get out four gigabytes of RAM out of the system, but again, you have that ability. You have the chipset here. Now, what's also interesting and nice to have in this system is that PCI Express slot right there. That makes all the difference when it comes to expandability and being able to do additional upgrades on this computer. In addition to that, we have three PCI slots, one of which is occupied here by the looks of things by that modem. And I was going on about that tool is designed. However, it seems to be failing me <laughs> because we have a screw here holding in the, uh, the expansion bay here. So I'm just gonna open that up and get that out of the way so we can look at what this is. So it looks like a pretty generic modem here. So it says an Agir Systems Pinball P40 and quite dirty. It has HP part number, so it would have came with this system and doesn't give us much more information other than that, but I would say that that's probably a um, you know, probably a 56K modem given the error of the system. I'm actually gonna leave that out for now. We're not gonna power it up with that right now. Just wanna make sure the system posts before we do any sort of cleaning up for this system. And, you know, for a hard disk, we don't have one in here. We have the floppy drive that is populated because we saw that in the front, but we don't have the hard disk here. But I do have plenty of SATA drives. Uh, spinning rust, I know, it's a lot of people tell me all the time on the channel, you know, use a, an adapter or switch to SATA to compact flash or SSD, but why? I, I mean, yes, performance, I get that for sure. But as long as I have tons of those drives, I'm going to use them just to really, really authentic to what it was like back in the day. Then we have our coin cell battery here as well. That's hiding up down here. No doubt that'll have to be replaced. And then we have additional SATA connections here. So you know, this could be a well-rounded system for expandability. If you wanted to add a decent dedicated graphics card here, you had additional PCI ports. If you wanted to throw, say, a Sound Blaster Live sound card in here, if you wanted to turn this into some sort of gaming type system with the Pentium 4 CPU, don't, I don't know what it is in terms of a processor speed yet, but we're going to find out. Expand the RAM, very possible. We could do that together. And of course, the hard disk. I mean, there's a lot of capability here in this system, I think, based on what I'm seeing, assuming that everything works. Now, I don't exactly, and, and so I don't know why I keep on forgetting this, as to when the capacitor plague was, and I'm sure I'll get comments down below as to when it was, because you guys like to remind me of that, and I appreciate that. But here, I mean, I'm not seeing any damage or any sort of signs of leaking. Now, the IBM Think Center M50 that I worked on in that video that I called out earlier, had a bunch of these capacitors specifically around the heat sink that were going bad. And I have some on order right now. So hint for a future video, we'll be taking that system apart and replacing them. But what happens is that there's heat generated obviously around the processor area and that affects the capacitors themselves and actually shortens the life of them if you have low quality ones. So that's what's been happening here in some of these systems that have been coming across. Okay, I think we are good to get the system set up on the bench to at least turn it on to see if it even posts. And if it does that, I think it's a candidate to do a cleanup on it and see if we can get an operating system on it as well. So how about I go ahead and do a jump cut, we'll be to the bench and set up to see if the system will post. When I plugged in the power in the back, it didn't do the standard thing that we saw in our previous video with the Dells or some other Lenovo or IBM systems. It just did show an indicator light though that was getting power, so I didn't see anything blow. Let's hit power button and see what happens. Sounds like there's a CD in there. Oh, we have post. <laughs> yes, it's working. All right, we have work to do now. Okay, so it says reboot and select proper boot device. We already know we do not have a boot drive yet, so I'll hit control, delete, 
just to see if we can get that splash screen again and go into setup. Just want to see what's in the system. So F1 is set up. It did show F10 for system recovery, but there's no hard disk that is in the system. So I can't utilize the hard disk. Um, now, okay, I am seeing some sort of distortion on the screen. That's not the camera or the footage. There is distortion on the screen. So I don't know if it's that cable I'm using, uh, the VGA cable or not, but I'll have to take a look at that. Okay, so under main, we are showing that we have a light on DVD RW drive and another LTN 48.5S drive. So those are the two drives that we have in here, but it is keeping the date, not the time, the time's off by a couple hours, but the date is holding. So that coin cell seems to be working just fine. We also have our PC2 4200 SD RAM, DDR2 SD RAM that's installed, so our one gigabyte. So we verified that earlier, but it does seem to be working just fine, even though I had removed it. Now we go, we have some processor information now. So under advanced, we have our Intel Pentium 4 CPU running at 3.06 gigahertz, supporting HT technology, so hyper-threading. Then it shows here the CPU speed. And what I'm not sure you can do any sort of tweaking with that, but at least you have the ability to have a pretty decent processor for what it is in the system at the time. And then so plug and play OS, yes, primary video adapters, PCI. So it's using the onboard video for now. PS2 mouse is installed and all of our different tweaks we can do. So onboard TV out, the format if you wanted to do NTS NTSC or PAL, I believe probably is what it gives you. Uh, yeah, there it is. And then onboard LAN and your boot ROM and your 1394. So, I mean, you can choose to go in here to enable these items or remove them or what have you. It does have a built-in hardware monitor. So it shows our CPU fan, which is running just fine, and our system fan speed as well. So we have two fans that are in here. And then showing that the CPU is running at 45 degrees C. I would like to add more thermal paste to that, take that apart and clean it up just to give it more life and under power i'm not gonna everyone knows i don't spend a lot of time on the power stuff and under boot so we have start with floppy group <laughs> it must be because it's including the card reader in there as well then the cd-rom group so one of the two cd-roms then the hard drive group apparently this is a club of boot devices so we have our hard drive group so that would be any hard disks that we have in here and then of course the network and then it would give the priorities as we would want to go all right, I did hear something in this. So I, I, I swore I heard a CD in here when I was moving around. No, okay, maybe not. It just sounded like the when I was moving the computer around that there might have been a CD inside there. So uh, I don't see one in there, so that's fine. Okay, I think the next step we're going to do is remove everything off the bench and do a quick cleanup of the computer on the inside, take the CPU out, do some more thermal paste, get that all cleaned up. And, you know, I, I think it's worth doing on the system. We're able to get it to this stage, so I think it deserves a good cleanup. So let's go. Okay, so... We are in a much better shape now. We have a 500 gig SATA drive that's been installed in the system just because I had a spare 500 gig SATA, so I use that. I've reconnected the floppy, both power and the cable, as well as the IDE cables for both optical drives plugged in as well. We put some brand new MX4 thermal paste under the heatsink here. I've opted to remove the modem that was inside the system. I know that normally goes against what I normally do on these systems, but I think, uh, you know, I, I changed it out with a D-Link 530TX Ethernet card, just in case I wanted to put this on any sort of network internally. So we have that. So now that leaves us with the next part here. And so something I wanna to talk to about is the video card. So we could continue on with utilizing the video card that we have built on board, but I figured what we'll do is unbox and utilize the ATI Radeon X1300. And you know what? I don't know if this is a fancy card, not fancy card. We had some different comments in the um in the thrift finds video when i had done this but i mean anything's better than what we have in the system i would think now and it was it was a 2005 card the system is 2006 
It specifically calls out Media Center 2005 on the box. And heck, it says right here, graphics card that opens doors, new PC gaming and digital home entertainment. Why not use it? So let's get right to it. Install this card. Okay, so we have the card installed. The other thing I want to mention is the system originally came with one gigabyte of memory, as we talked about earlier. And I found a very similar other stick of DDR2 memory in the same class, but it was only 512. Then I found two one gigabyte sticks of memory. So I put those in and I'm hoping that they just fire up. If not, I'll get them all sorted out. But we definitely have some backup RAM in case we need it. Okay, so we have the system all put back together. And as I mentioned earlier, I installed a 500 gigabyte SATA hard drive. So let's get the computer all situated back on the bench and see if we can get the system reposting. And we are ready to go and see if this will actually start up after we've done all the work uh, to the system. And before I do, I just want to go through the contents of the Radeon X13 box because it is new old stock. And normally I do some sort of unboxing, but where the system was already all on its side and we were in the process of installing it. So let's go through it real quickly. So it looks like we have a video out, S video out cable here. We also have what looks like to be additional composite video out as well. We also have a DVI to VGA adapter, which is very handy to have. We also have what looks like an additional adapter here for the card to be able to hook up S video connection to the composite there as well. And we also have, oh, sorry, that would be the video regular RCA video. This is the composite here. So this takes the S-Video signal and converts it over to the composite. So that video card there gives you a lot of options when it comes to being able to hook up a couple monitors or hook up external devices. And heck, if we're making a media center PC, then why not utilize that extra that, those extra cables and have those, which is really awesome. Important, do not return this product. ATI Customer Care offers free product support. You know what? Sold. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously they don't want you to return it. You open it up, it has a problem, give them a shout and they'll be able to walk you through getting it all set up. And then we also have our bag of goodies here. So let's give this a little open and see what is inside. Yeah, just, uh, it's really exciting to have a new old stock. Even if it is not a higher end card, it will be sufficient for what we're gonna use it for. There's our software, always great to have the software, but no doubt there are newer drivers out there for this card from the site, so I'll have to get those to make sure we're good. Our get started guide, which we are not going to read on the channel, but it just basically walks you through installing the card and getting it put in. And then warranty information. And then our customer care, free product support, <laughs> and to be able to contact them and get service on the ATI stuff here. Okay, so that is all what is in the box. So there you go, you had a mini unboxing on this beautiful uh, video card here. So, all right, we have that all put aside, all good to go. Now let's see if the moment of truth is for real. Just look at the site. It's just a beautiful looking system. And that's one thing about OEMs that were really nice is that if you got a really cool one, aesthetically pleasing, it looked awesome. But just because it looks nice doesn't mean it necessarily works. So let's see what happens. Good so far. And it posts again, F1 for setup. I don't have any luck with RAM and all of a sudden I have all the luck. So yeah, I mean, we took the processor completely out. I mean, you saw everything. We took everything out of the system, did a thorough cleaning of everything, put it all back in the computer. And yeah, it, it's just having all that is great. So let's see what we have. So we have our two optical drives that are here as well as our, we didn't have this before. So that's our 500 gigabyte hard drive. Then of course we have our memory here, our two gigabytes of memory. There's our two one gig sticks. So the two that I found, which were matching sticks of memory, really worked out that they can work in tandem. So I have Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005 with Service Pack 3. I'm gonna be utilizing the license that's on the side of the panel of the system. And uh, yeah, we'll continue on with this. So let's go to exit. And the boot is set to CD-ROM group first, so that's good. So we'll exit and save changes, yes. Now let's see if the system will pick up the CD-ROM drive. Okay, so we have our boot menu. Let's choose that's where I believe I have my CD. 
And it doesn't seem to be reading from it. Let's swap the drive out. I can play with that in a bit. Get that replaced, fixed up. That yeah, sounds healthier. There we are. So there must be an issue with the light scribe drive. So I will be taking that apart to clean it out and see if I can get the laser going and find out exactly what's wrong with that drive. But in the meantime, here we are, and hopefully we'll be able to install Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005 with Service Pack 3. Now everybody has gone through the Windows XP installation with me historically on the channel, so I'm going to do a nice little fast forward here so everyone can enjoy the Windows XP Media Center setup. Here we go. Okay, and we are back with the fully installed Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005. And before I go any further, it's been quite a journey to get to this point. I'm going to walk you through it. So I had had some issues during the installation. So I was attempting to install it and it continued to stop on trying to copy drivers. It kept on trying to copy the setup files over in the initial Windows XP setup. So I thought it was memory because the computer continued to hang every single time on different files. It wasn't consistent. So I tried that. That didn't work. I tried contact cleaner because I thought it was the memory because it, when I would take one stick out, it would stop at a different spot. That didn't work. So then I thought it was the video card. So I took the video card out of the machine. I turned it back on. The machine still did the same thing, just in a different spot. Again, continuing to be confusing. Then I went into the BIOS setup and told it to do different settings, like turned off certain hardware and things like that, thinking that that's what was causing it to pause. Nope, that did not make a difference. So then I took out cables and I changed out the hard drive and I did a whole bunch of things. All of that to say, at the end of the day, the issue was the drive. <laughs> This was the drive that was on the top of the of the system and the other drive that I had a problem with which we were using to install was this guy right here. So both drives are bad and I don't know what the chances of that are. So I'm going to take these guys apart. I'm going to fix them up and find out what's going on with those. However, we do have a DVD multi-drive. I was able to get that installed and everything is working just fine now. I mean, it took longer than usual because it's Media Center versus regular Windows XP, but it did work. So here we are. We now have the desktop. So you can see it's slightly different than the regular Windows XP desktop. So before we do anything, we're going to go into my computer under properties and check it out. So we do have the Windows XP Media Center Edition version 2002. Service Pack 3, the Retro Recall, and Intel Pentium 4 3.06 gigahertz. Our computer name is fine. Our hardware under Device Manager, we're going to see a bunch of things here. So our disk drives, we have our different readers that are all through the USB. We have our hard drive. That's the 500 gigabyte hard drive that we have installed. DVD ROM drives, that's just the one that I had swapped out there, but I would like to get this drive at least done, fixed up and installed because it does have the light scribe, but also because it's HP branded and I'd like to have that in that in the system. And we have our standard controllers and all going down to network adapters. So it did install the 10100 network adapter that we had there. It's just one I had laying around. I'm sure I could find a gigabit controller if I wanted to throw it on the network. So then we have a bunch of drivers missing. We'll get to that in a moment. Scrolling down, continuing here, we have our CPU, which is our Pentium 4 3.06 gigahertz. Our sound, video, and game controllers. So it is missing part drivers, so it installed some drivers that Windows XP was able to detect, so that's good. And our storage volume, system devices, etc. So under other devices, um, sorry, I'm going to check display driver, so we don't have that. So the video controller is here. This is the 
the video controller for the video card. I'm going to throw that in for now just to get this installed. You go to do things like this. You want to get the latest updates from the manufacturer. I'm going and doing this the way I'm doing it just for now, just to get the initial stuff installed. Okay, we are loaded all back up here and it has installed the drivers for the video card, no problem. So it's gonna go into properties for a moment and you can see it's quite set to quite high resolution. We're gonna change that back uh, just so we can have better uh, view of the screen. So we'll do that now. And again, this is just for us for the sake of recording so everybody can see the screen a little better. Now, we saw the drivers we have to deal with. So most times when I do this sort of thing, I just get go to the manufacturer's website and I just download the drivers and I'm good to go. It installed the display adapter, so the Radeon X1300 series, so that's all installed. So that's looking already much better. Obviously, you can tell by the desktop resolution. So what I usually do is, like I said, install the other drivers, but this time I have something that I have not been doing uh, it's been suggested to me many times on the channel through comments down below, Snappy Driver Installer. So I'm going to do that right now, and we'll get them all installed. Okay, we're back to the Windows desktop. The startup sounds working just fine. Let's go and check out those drivers under Properties, and everything else stay the same there. Let's go under Device Manager, and bam, sure enough, we have all those drivers installed, courtesy of the snappy driver installer. I will tell you, it was quite snappy. <laughs> I know, terrible. But I, I'm I'm excited. Like, I, I'm very happy I was able to get this. Very happy I listened to everyone's suggestions on the channel and all the comments. And this made life so much easier once I was able to install that. So yeah, no, definitely easy to use. So anybody who's out there trying to restore older systems instead of going online and hunting down. I usually stick to the manufacturer's websites, but in some cases, if the this is the next best thing, I'm telling you, it's it's absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, continue to use that. Let's take a look at good old Windows XP Media Center Edition. So again, you know, thinking back to when you, in 2006, when this computer came out, I mean, you're, you're getting this computer for the first time. Now, one thing I don't have is the original image of this system. The hard drive wasn't in the computer, uh, similar to the Sony VAIO system that I had, and I was able to get that one. But, you know, if you anybody has an image for this, the HP Pavilion A1320N, let me know in the comments or upload it, upload it to archive.org. That'd be very helpful because um, definitely helpful to restore systems like this. Uh, I know some people call it bloatware and what have you, but it would be really cool to see some of the software that HP included with the computer to really promote the multimedia aspects of this computer. Okay, so under programs, let's go here. So we have, you know, just your standard stuff when it comes to your Windows XP, you know, just your accessories. ATI installed some different software as we installed uh, the video card. So the Catalyst Control Center, that's where you go in and tweak all your settings for your video card. Specifically, if you're having some problems. Now, Snappy did install drivers that were four years newer than what had come with the actual card itself. So it's nice that it worked. So we have our games, our good old pinball, spider solitaire, minesweeper, game shadow. Yeah, so that would have been probably something to do with uh, the software. I believe the, AD, uh, the video card installed. So yeah, Windows Digital Media Enhancements. So we have Windows Audio Converter. Windows CD Label Maker, Windows Dancer displays a two-dimensional animated dancer or pair of dancers on your Windows desktop. What is this? Oh my goodness. Windows Dancer to encounter an error while attempting to direct audio. For more information about this problem, click the message. Okay, <laughs> what is that? Uh, surprise me random and start dancing. I guess there's supposed to be music, I, I don't know. Oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> I've never I have never seen this before ever. Uh surprise me random selection based on music. You know, I don't know what music's on here. We don't have any music right now. I'm sure you could actually choose it. 
Use the uh, dancer. That's fine. Keep dancer on top of other windows. Run this program when it starts. Uh, okay, so I think it's it come she'll come up and dance while you're using the computer or playing different music or sounds. But my goodness, uh, she has some moves on her. Jeez, this is <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at that. I've never seen that. Okay, I'll stop talking about her. But my goodness, if you've seen that, please let me know in the comments because I. I have never seen that. And to my knowledge, I think that came with the uh, with with Windows. So again, anyway, okay, you got to stop for now. We're uh, we're done dancing for now. I, I like your little outro there. That's awesome. Okay, what else is here? Uh, under Windows Digital Media Enhancement, so Windows Party Mode. When I highlight that, includes a full screen skin that helps you use a computer as a jukebox during a party. <laughs> Oh, I'm clicking it. You know I am. Welcome to Windows Party Mode. Party Mode is a full screen skin for Windows Media Player that enables you and your guests to use a computer as a jukebox during a party. Party Mode includes options to let you control the amount of access guests have to the library in Windows Media Player and prevent them from accessing the files of your computer. Oh my goodness. Okay. So then it says track information, all music. So it's probably because we don't have any music on the computer that, you know, this is kind of giving us some errors and things like that. But yeah, so it gives you an option to block the desktop, access the desktop to other programs. So that way, you know, you can set this computer up in the corner. It is a media center computer, right? So you set this computer up in a com corner, you go ahead and you hit play and you can tell it to block access to other programs. So someone's not walking up to your computer and playing different things there. Okay, so, you know, change visualization when track changes, crossfading, edit marquee. So you can actually put a bunch of text in there if you wanted to. Skinner's energy, sure. We'll just click on start party and see what happens. I, I don't know what it's going to do. All music. Yeah, see, I think I think it need yeah, it definitely needs tunes. Okay, so my guess is you uh yeah, it says no disc and drive, all music. Yeah, so it's not gonna work. So basically you'd have a CD in here or music in here, and it would be a visualization here that you'd be able to watch and do different effects. So yeah, no, I I, I love it. I love it. Is, is the party over? <laughs> yes, it's over. Oh, what is this? I've never seen it in my life. I think it's awesome. Either that or I live in a shell. One of the two. Okay. Uh, under all programs again. So we definitely saw those. So we have Windows Audio Converter. Let's click on that or highlight. Converts audio files into Windows Media Audio. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. Create labels for your CD. But again, if we get the light scribe going, then we won't need that. And can your PC do this? No. Unfortunately, it can't anymore. But we're going to fix that. Okay, Media Center. Click on Media Center, and this is the big highlight of the version of Windows we've installed. And it really helps having Media Center installed. I mean, you can install it on any computer. However, it is something that, you know, is really good specifically for a system that has all the hardware to support that software. So it says here, uh, welcome to the Windows Media Center setup wizard. It will take five to 10 minutes to complete the wizard. No problem. We'll click on Next. Required setup. Media Center checks components like networking, internet, and optional setup features. Read your privacy. Good. We read all that. No, we don't want to join. That's fun. We're not going to improve it right now. About our privacy. Do you want Media Center to automatically connect to the internet to get this information? No, not right now. We have an always on internet connection. Absolutely, we do. Test your connection. No. Required components have been set up. You have answered all necessary questions and successfully set up the following Media Center components. Enhance playback and internet connection. Optimize how Media Center looks on your display. Sure. Okay, we'll click on Next. And we'll watch a video. From movies to television to DVD programming, video is a big part of Windows XP Media Center Edition. This guide will help you make every television program and every movie you see look even better. You'll see some scenes with friends playing billiards to help you get the best looking image on whatever display you connect to Windows XP Media Center Edition. Setting up your system with this guide is easy. We'll help you make sure that you see the entire picture. That the picture is the right size and shape. That you're not missing details and shadows. <laughs> or distorting the bright areas of the video. 
that the color of the picture is as accurate as possible. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have not used identify your display type. So what type of display is attached to your media center PC? So remember, you can have your monitor connected, but you can have another, you know, a big screen television off in the corner utilizing the cables that would have come with the video card or the connections that you have in the back of the computer natively. Uh, we're just going to use the um, flat panel for now. Uh, we're not going to do anything with that. And we're using just VGA for now. That's fine. Standard uh, screen is fine as well. And current resolution, do you want to use this? Yes. Adjust display controls. Note, we'll finish the wizard. So we're all set up for now. And we're going to set up our speakers next. Welcome to speaker setup. You will now configure your PC to work with your speakers. During this module, you will specify how many speakers you have and test your speakers. All right. So we have two speakers for now that are up there. But again, we're just testing this. But next... And we'll hit test. It says the video decoder has either malfunctioned or is not installed. Please restart Media Center. I have, don't know. Let's click on one more time. Okay. So it's something you definitely have to look at, but I think that the video card itself also came with decoder, I believe. So that's something we should install. So we'll, uh, we'll just hit uh, cancel for now there. It's not a big, uh, big deal. I'm finished. Uh, yeah, so you're set up, ready to just start using Media Center. Okay, we'll click on it there. So, yeah, so just imagine, and now some of these computers also had infrared, so you could use a remote control on the computer, so you wouldn't have the monitor hooked up here. You'd have this directly connected to your TV or another display device and your speakers and what have you, and then you'd use the remote to be able to access and scroll through all of this, and I think that's pretty awesome. So you go into your videos, your pictures, your music, and then be able to go ahead and select the different things. Now, I mean, there's no music, but it says, hey, we'll search your computer and we'll add the music for you. We're not going to do that right now, but it's fairly intuitive and easy to use. So more programs. What do we have? Do you want to create a CD or a DVD? Do you want to sync to a particular device? So you have your camera or you have your video camera. And then here, Messenger. Of course, you have Windows Messenger or MSN Messenger at the time. So under pictures, music, videos, you want to play a DVD, you know, that would have been a big thing as well when you're thinking about it uh, back then. And then, of course, going to settings. So we have our general, our TV, pictures, music, DVD, messenger and caller ID, radio and help. So here you'd be able to go in and configure all the different things. I mean, we started to configure some of it. But again, it's just really awesome to see this and having this installed on this computer. And, you know, I invested a little more time into this system because I don't have a media center computer. And when I saw this, I figured, OK, a nice, decent Pentium 4. I have the, you know, I saw the PCI Express when we went through this and I thought, why not pop in this video card, the ATI Radeon X1300, and utilize its additional connections and features to be able to make it an OK gaming system, but also a really good media player and just really bring it back to the day. Cause I have some older TVs and things like that that are really bring it back. So, okay, so we're gonna click on shut down for now because we're just gonna shut down our media center and we'll hit close. Uh, oh, it's interesting, go we'll standby, restart, shut down. We're just gonna close media center for now cause we're not closing the computer itself. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm very, very pleased that this is operational. It took quite a bit of work to get here with this computer, for sure, because of those optical drives that just didn't work well. But again, I love the idea of the light scribe and the HP branding here. So I'm going to take this all apart and see if I can get it cleaned up. My gut feeling on this particular drive is just a laser being dirty because we saw some dirt inside. This drive here was in the system. I don't think it's native to the system. This says here, light on IT core, of course, and it has a different date than the one over there. This was April 2000 and the other one is newer. So again, I'll have to um, find out what's going on with this and see what we can uh, do to fix it. If not, no, no love lost on that one. We'll see what we can do on that. Okay, so I think this was very successful. Yes, we had some challenges, as I mentioned, with the drives and other things we had to do to get the system running. 
but I think that we are in very good shape with this system. You know, the video has gone on quite a while. I thought about doing some games and things like that. I'll make that like a part two of this series specifically. If you want to see certain games, you'll let me know down in the comments what sort of games we'll be able to run on the ATI Radeon X1300 on, you know, in this particular computer in this setup, you know, running the system. Also, I'd be really keen to get some, you know, copyright free type videos and music on this computer to really test out the media center uh, ability, you know, whether it's connected directly to a television and kind of, you know, experience what that would be like. So that would definitely for me be a successful part two to this computer. But overall, like I said, rewinding back to what I was saying at the beginning, OEMs were really competing with each other to try to get these out to the market, these systems out to the market, and really get these into people's homes. Because once they were in there, you know, they could do, uh, they were hooked, right? So they would do different things to upgrade them and different software suites, et cetera. And for one, I'm really excited that we have this, really happy we have this in the collection. Very happy to have this as part of the channel and excited that this came from that e-waste file and we were able to fully clean it out and do a full restoration on this computer and get it back to its former glory and arguably with a little bit of upgrades <laughs> that we were able to do it. So that said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, change the notification to all, you'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below, like I mentioned, let me know what sort of games would be compatible with the Radeon X1300 and this version of Windows in this setup. What particular things would you like to see on this computer? Did you own one of these computers? Let me know in the comments. I loved hearing about all of the different experiences. I love reading all of your comments. I respond to every one of them. Always making new content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.